Hello, and welcome to episode 22 of Buxton Barrowman, where I go through Buxton's history and clean up the town at the same time. Today, I'll be talking about the lost estate of Orient Lodge. The estate used to be located in Green Fairfield on Hardy Barn Lane, and of course, I had to go on a little wander to see what's left. But in the meantime, I'll talk about its history. Orient Lodge was built in 1896 for Samuel Swan Britton and his wife, Emma. That believed to be her anglicised name as she was from Arabic descent. But Samuel was what you would call a gentleman adventurer and he made his fortunes in the vast reaches of the old British Empire. Said to have been able to speak seven languages and had tea and cotton businesses in Egypt, India and further into the African continent. These parts of the world back in the day were collectivised as the Near Orient and is most likely the reason behind the house's name. The house was rather extravagant and of course, what would you expect from such a couple? Many people worked within the grounds with dairy staff, farmers, servants and gardeners. Originally, most of the surrounding land in the estate was open farmland, but Britain landscaped his estate with the formal garden and many plants from overseas. The estate had its own stables with a beautiful orangery and there were stories from back in the day that it was filled with exotic fruit trees, which I'm sure many people in Derbyshire back then had never seen in their life. However, as you're already aware from the video title, the estate is no longer around. So what happened? Well, the Britons started getting into financial difficulties during the First World War. It was reported that an uninsured shipment of tea found itself at the bottom of the ocean. Unfortunately, it got severe enough that they began paying their farm manager, Ben Bingham, in land rather than in wages. And this continued until Ben had all the estate in his name at the start of the 1930s. And it was at this time, in the 30s, that land was also being sold off to ICI who owned the nearby Tunstead Quarry. The quarry was rapidly expanding and Robert Bingham, Ben's son, had made an agreement to limit the approach of the quarry and if that agreement was to be breached, penalties would ensue. That is exactly what proceeded, the Binghams being heavily compensated for the loss of their land. Robert was still in ownership of the house up until his passing in 1977. After that, the house and its land was bought by ICI. They did some blast testing on the buildings to see the effect of such, and then demolished the estate in 1978. Robert nor his siblings had children of their own, and so the £70,000 from the sale of the land was put towards the Bingham Trust, a charity that still serves Buxton to this day helping fund projects across town. Now, as I approach Hardy Barn Lane, it's apparent all that remains are the line of trees that once lay alongside the main driveway. And a little further down, the spot of the old gatehouse. Although there aren't many pictures of the inside other than the fireplace, the pictures we do have were thankfully taken by ICI prior to demolition, as well as Audrey Evans, who once lived in the Orient's gatehouse. Also, as a final note, it's unsure what became of the Britons after the estate was handed over. All that is known is that their son, Major Edward Samuel Britton, served in France in 1915 and then in Sudan in 1923, where he passed at the age of 31. Edward is commended in St. Peter's Church, Fairfield. This episode's cleanup was rather a short one, thanks to Buxton's unpredictable weather, so, just one wheelbarrow full of rubbish. Lovely view, albeit a bit windy. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and until next time, ta ra! It's always something that's a bit funny to me that this is a quarry and a, a rocking great big cliff on the other end, it's just like a farmer's fence. Yet schools have fences that belong on prisons. It's just thought.